Thanks, Manohat. Uh, welcome to everyone. Uh, it was really nice introducing by Manohat, and uh, again, thanks for that. Uh, as you mentioned, just one more minute, uh, probably to introduce myself. I've been working with small and big organizations, and the talk today is more uh, with regards to how one team uh, became from uh, uh, just part of people, how we become a high performance, uh, the highest performance team in, in the whole organization, because there is a lot about uh, uh, high performance and how the teams are uh, getting better and better. So the topic for today is Lean Mean Machine or Scrum Team Journey. Uh, I hope that you can see my presentation. You can see those three guys here. It's uh, from one American movie. It's called Mean Machine. It's about one guy going into prison and, and working with uh, uh, the people there in the prison to create one uh, great football team and they can challenge uh, the guards. And that's why I wanted to, to have the same, uh, the same topic because uh, all the time a lot of people are saying you know what we give you everything now you do the the, the scrum and everything is going to be perfect so uh without further ado um let me sh let me start with explaining a bit of backstory about the company and how how we started uh so the company info uh interesting or not it's it's not a software company it's a manufacturing company and with that manufacturing company we had our uh IT department, let's say. Uh, it's one of the biggest producers of cement and ready mix worldwide. You know, the ready mix, the big trucks with ready mix inside. Uh, quite a huge company. They've got 60 plus locations uh, in the world. Uh, funny thing or not, no clue about Agile. Um, and uh, we had very strict deadlines. Uh, the strict deadlines came uh, by the CEO itself who went to the New York Stock Exchange and made that commitment that in 14 months, if I remember correctly, or 16 months, something like that, we're going to have an application which is going to allow their customers to order cement and ready mix online. So our part of, of uh, what we needed to do, it was uh, create that application which is going to allow the users to order cement, to deliver it, to choose which side to pay in different ways and so on and so on. And then we close the whole, the whole cycle. Uh, unfortunately, the, the biggest challenge here was uh, uh, that we had really, really strict deadline. We could not move it even if we wanted to. Um, the other thing that uh, uh, I was taught at uh, the start was that uh, we have dependencies across every department. Because of the location of the company, uh, we were based in Czech Republic, in Prague, which is a beautiful city. Uh, and we had some people in Miami, in Florida, we had some people in Bangalore, in India, and we had some people in Monterey, in Mexico City. So you can imagine it was across the whole world. Uh, and uh, funny or not, because it's, it's a manufacturing company, it was a uh, one-person decision-making process, uh, which <laughs> I don't need to explain you, but in a company with thousands of people, you can imagine... Uh, what does it mean? So when I applied for that job, this is the this was the, the short introduction by the company, and they said, you know what? Next steps is your team. Uh, so what I was told, that's why I put that the beautiful picture of Superman and Supergirl because uh, uh, this is what I was what what I was explaining uh, at the start. That I'm gonna have a strong forty people team, uh, and I said, wow, great, huge initiative. Uh, the whole the whole project was consisting of about 120 180 people all together but because we were separated on different um, parts of the application I would say it was uh, I was working with the biggest one and this is what what I was told that we've got 40 people strong uh, uh, team which is ready to rumble uh, the second thing which was really nice for me because I like to work with uh, uh, multicultural teams because every culture you know brings different kind of uh, experience different kind of uh, specialty different kind of saying yes or no depending on the situation it was 17 different nationalities uh, we had people from france germany india america uk us me from bulgaria <laughs> we had people from czech republic poland all over the world um, also what i was uh, sold off uh, 
was that uh, we have great expert knowledge and skill set. What I mean, it, what what they meant, what they meant is that uh, all the people are senior. They're coming from different directions, from McKinsey, from Deloitte, from PwC, great great companies. And I was saying, okay, this is going to be something uh, fantastic. Uh, also, because it was um, uh, a worldwide project or product, I would say. Uh, what what I was promised is that we're going to have all the domain knowledge. Why? Because uh, I'm going to give you just simple example. Um, they have 600 types of clients uh, as a company. VAP clients, VAP clients which are paying cash, VAP clients which are not paying cash, VAP clients which do not pay for six months and so on. And they have 2,500, if I remember correct, correctly, types of cement. So it was quite a, a complicated business logic, I would say. So this was uh, what I promised. Domain knowledge expertise, don't worry about it. Uh, again, going back to a domain knowledge expertise, no dependencies. They promise it will be amazing, it will be great. Don't worry about dependencies, we're reacting really quickly and so on and so on. Uh, the last two points, clear goals and vision, I would say that we had them to some extent because we know what needs to be delivered by, by what date. And uh, the last thing that I put, it was, it was something that I asked them uh, jokingly. Uh, I said, okay, if I want, what is going to happen? If I request some things, are you going to help me? Uh, the answer was, uh, yes, anything you want is going to happen. And I was ready to commit myself. Uh, relocated to Czech Republic, found an apartment and everything, ready to go to my first couple of weeks to to, to work. What was the reality? Uh, maybe you can see that crazy guy. Uh, when I went there, it was uh, just all over the place. Uh, first, very, very strict deadlines. Uh, initially, uh, when we were talking about it, even though I knew what the deadline is, uh, being in, in uh, software world for the past 15 years, it's, it's meant to me that sometimes deadlines need to be moved. Uh, but what, what I end up with, strict deadlines. There is no movement of that deadline. It's been uh, explained to the stock exchange, it's been explained to our stakeholders. So we don't really care about uh, anything except meeting that deadline. And I said, okay, fine. Uh, probably the other part that you explained to me were better. Uh, when I done my first couple of weeks of uh, observations, investigations, trying to understand how things are working, I found out that we've got huge technical dependencies across the whole organization, from databases to servers to whatever you can imagine. Uh, when I start working with, uh, with my team, lack of cross-functionality in the team was a huge burden also for us because most of the people that were initially assigned to that project was uh, just front-end developers. They didn't have clue about backend, about Java, about databases, no clue whatsoever. Uh, also, when I started uh, talking with them, some of them were senior, some of them were junior team members, which was again something like uh, uh, not hiding the truth, but not being honest uh, completely at the start. Uh, the other thing that was uh, quite problematic, it was that the project was based in three continents, South America, North America, and Europe, which was, it was a huge challenge again to think from the perspective as working as one team and delivering all of this, being my team, the biggest in, uh, in that uh, IT department and so on and so on. Uh, the other thing again, um, or additional thing that I found out is that uh, end of the day, this is an old bureaucratic uh, company with a lot of, uh, um, I would say, uh, boundaries. And those boundaries, again, were did not uh, uh, fully explained at the start to the extent that we're going to be affected by them uh, long term. Th this was something that I, when I start asking questions, when I start digging, when I was putting my different scrum hat and moving around in different departments, this is something that I understood, which was quite impactful on our project. Why? You're going to see on, on, the next, uh, on the next slide. And the last one was really uh, something that I noticed when we start working together. No idea what we are doing together. Uh, because the team was quite huge from quite different nationalities, from quite different places. When we started our first week, we didn't even know what we were doing. 
why we're putting into together, how we are affecting the other teams, what we need to deliver, how we need to deliver, zero. It was, uh, it was like uh, they went outside, just pick up random people and put them uh, together, which was like a, a bit of a shocking for me because we were going towards the end of uh, our first month working together and we had only 12 months to deliver that huge and very complicated uh, application. Uh, going to the next slide, um, what I've done, it's a, a very simple five-step plan. Um, I spoke with all the management with regards to what they want to achieve, how they want to achieve it, just to understand their point of view. Uh, the simple answer, simple answer was, Lubo, we don't care about uh, Agile, we don't care about Scrum, we don't care about anything, we only care about delivery, which was kind of conflicting message of the moment that those people, including myself, we started working with, uh, with this organization. So based on this, I was thinking and I, I was wondering, is it really worth it going into the direction of uh, uh, getting Scrum by the book? having the daily stand-ups, the three questions, uh, having the product owners write the user stories in, uh, um, in invest principles, canon analysis, all these kind of things. And uh, what I came up with, it was the exact same uh, message that I sent to them. I went there with those five points and I said, you know what, this is the things that we need to tackle first so we can start delivering uh, something and then improve it incrementally. The, the, the most important thing, at the start working with those guys was to decrease and divide the teams into smaller units because 40 people communicating, discussing, it was like a, a big place. Everybody was talking about something. There was no communication uh, on the same topic for days. Uh, so this was my, my initial start. I said, you know what, based on the team size, based on the capacity, based on delivery, we need to we need to de de we need to divide those those uh, forty people to smaller units. The second thing was to to the way that we organize those teams to have at least some kind of cross functionality, because otherwise it will be just uh, we're gonna wait for each other, we're gonna complain to each other, and so on and so on. So this was the the second thing in dividing those uh, uh, forty people into smaller units to have the skill set to deliver bits and pieces of functionality. Obviously, in due time, we're going to aim to, to, to deliver much more and to increase our cross functionality. But the initial to get to the point of how we're going to start was to, 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 to divide ourselves into cross functional teams delivering value. The third point that I, that I put there, it was deliver quality. What I meant by quality was to limit the number of bugs and the repetition of work because you can imagine we had only one product owner at that time and you can imagine all the user stories coming in in into the backlog uh, ad hoc discussions uh, uh slack messages zoom messages zoom meetings and everything so the, the the only thing that i wanted to concentrate on was to have single source of truth so we can be del delivering really really quality based on the information that is going there you can have as many as you want ad hoc discussion, but it was really important to keep that quality so there is no bugs and so on and so on. Um, transparency and delivery. Uh, transparency, the simple uh, transparency. Uh, when I started working with those team, I was thinking about information boards, uh, information radiators across the whole office. But the bottom line of all of this was to, to have that uh, those guys uh, communicating, talking on the same language. And the last thing, which was about delivery, was about delivering something which is working. And this is the, the, going back to the Agile principles and manifesto that the only measurements of success in, into what the methodology, the process, or whatever it is, is having that working software in place. So this was our focus at the start, deliver something, doesn't matter how big or high, how small it is, but something that it was working. When I presented, those five step plan uh, to them initially the feedback was look this is very simple let's complicate it more let's create uh, boundaries rules regulations blah blah all these kind of things which uh, i politely rejected and we started with keeping the team small how did we done this and why is it important um 
when I was talking with, with the guys and when we were discussing about this, um, the, the, the main thing of keeping the team small is the line of communication. I think, or I don't know, I hope most of you are working uh, in big companies and you know that how important it is to know what we are talking about and who we are talking about and to listen to each other. That's why the, the most important thing, apart from focus, dedication, trust, and so on and so on, was to, to keep the communication really close and really straightforward uh, to, to, to between the team members. So when I divided those uh, uh, 40 people into four teams, I went to uh, creating even a space for them, separate space when those people were sitting, so we can keep that communication flowing directly, clear channel of communication. The focus part was more of creating um, about the delivery, that we need to deliver something. I don't really care what is it, we just need to deliver something so we can gain the trust of, of uh, our leadership management so they can um, allow us to be a bit more experimental as a next, as a next step. Um, dedication, when we were talking about dedication, it was more that uh, we cannot hide from each other. We are a really small unit and we need to, to have dedication to work to, towards the same goal. There is no a place and there is no time to hide from each other because I need to know and I need to trust the person that is sitting next to me and this is with the trust part what I'm doing, what he's doing and how we are affecting everything. So those five points I use as, as obvious as additional coaching, as additional workshops to create that same mind mindset about why the team needs to be small and how, how this is uh, um, how this is going to help us to achieve what we want to uh, achieve. The important thing that I, that I mentioned here to everyone is uh, uh, when we have some success, doesn't matter how small or how big it is, it, to share it with everyone. In this case, we, uh, I was working with the, the four teams to create that uh, even um, small competitive uh, pace within ourselves. Because if I, if I deliver something else, and if I'm part of team one, for example, I want that everyone to know what, what we deliver, how we manage to achieve it and, and share those success stories. Because in, in due time, when we, when we had more and more success stories, we managed to, uh, our management was quite interested about those success stories and they were selling that, selling those across uh, the whole organization. So it was not only in, in one place. Uh, Cross-functionality or the beauty of everything in, in one team. Why this was important in our case? Um, because I think everyone is aware, if we do not have the skills, we cannot deliver. So what I've done is, as I finished the observation period and I saw how dependent we are, uh, I moved people from different departments and countries. Um, with, with that knowledge and access, mainly on Debian and servers, which, were, which we were dependent on. Uh, because we had some people which, which only specific people have access to, to change some fields in the database and things like that. This was unacceptable because we were waiting for, for feedback or for adjustments, sometimes one day, two days, three days, even more. So what I've done, uh, and this is more connected with, uh, uh, in two slides about transparency, it's, it's created that urgency, and if you, if you heard about quarter steps of changes, eight steps of changes, this is the first one, create an urgency. And this is what we, what we created as a team. We created urgency that if we want to deliver, if we want to meet that specific mini deadline that we had in our internal boards and everything else, we needed to have the skills which are allow us to be more effective and to be more efficient and to actually deliver value. So apart from being empowered, we had the skills and, and decisions with us to request that. Uh, we had our domain exper expertise, which was brought to us. Otherwise, it was all over the place and the whole cross functionality was just uh, some words put in, into, into the office, nothing else. Uh, when we achieved that to move people from different countries, different departments to be within our team, we, we done also the other thing. We move our people to some other parts when they can be more efficient, more helpful to have that specific knowledge that is needed uh, somewhere else in, in the whole project that we're doing. So uh, apart from that, when we were uh, creating that 
team and when we, it was time passing and working when we were delivering more all the time i was uh, uh creating workshops and and coaching session to clear out the roles uh in our case product owner and there was uh, um uh how to say there was different level with in the team which were some junior some senior so it was really important to to create that unity within the team because the product owner was uh uh, previously project manager the way that he behaved there was a lot of coaching role specific specific for the process that we were doing because i don't want to to say that we were doing purely scrum or purely kanban or scrumban or something like that no 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 it was about the delivery even though we followed the inspect and adapt session out of scrum we mainly we were concentrated on actually delivering uh value um this is really nice picture that I like. Uh, building the right thing from product perspective, we always aim to build the, the, the right thing. From dev perspective, we want to build the thing right. And from cultural perspective, we need to build the team right. All of them to have great team is this, this part here in, in the middle, the green one. Um, how we achieved that, it was uh, uh, quite challenging because uh, um, we started normally, so all our reviews was before the product owner, some external stakeholders, but not, uh, I would say not too many. So what I push our product owner and I attended additional customer meetings just to share some uh, reports and all this kind, is uh, to get the actual customer feedback into, into our product backlog, to get their input. I, I was sending a lot of invitation for the, to them to attend. I was pushing them to attend. And also, um, our product owner, he was quite, I would say, empowered in that situation. He was also requesting feedback really, really often from them. Uh, what we, what we've done at the start, uh, just to again, going back to the trust part to get their understanding, their help, it was, uh, we were not following strict every two weeks or one week, uh, sprint cycles or something like that. When we were delivering something working, as a feature, directly we will ship it out to, to our customers to get their feedback, to be tested by them. We gave them access. And by doing this, what we've done, it's really, really important. We limit the waiting times because, you know, when we are, when we are working in, in um, that environment, we need to deliver quickly. This was our biggest, biggest bottleneck of all, waiting for something, waiting for answers, uh, uh, from stakeholders, waiting for feedback from the product owner, waiting from, uh, um, uh, from uh, I would say, uh, technical decisions, whatever it is. All the time we were waiting for something. And this is what we limit with those constant con conversations with, uh, with our uh, customers. We limit the waiting time. And that's why I put it, it's really important to have customer feedback and implement that channels of communication with our direct customers, which resulted in not obsolete work. Because sometimes we're just building our product backlog and it's based on uh, what I want to achieve. But generally, it should be concentrated on only on the items which are bringing value to you, not on everything else. Um, this also resulted in uh, best requirements in place. And I'm not talking about specific practice to use to write requirements, but it, they were really, really accurate. So whatever was in the backlog, it was bringing value to our customers. Obviously, this resulted in a, a much better backlog. And on top of that, and I introduced one practice, I'm sure that all of you are familiar with that. We introduced one practice, which is improvement backlog. All the things that we discussed during retrospective, during inspect and adapt, and all those kind of things were put into this improvement backlog. And it was like uh, the same backlog with improvements similar to our product backlog, which for this team increased the value of delivery multiple times. And as I said, my favorite one, no waiting time. The decision was made straight away, which uh, drastically improved our uh, velocity, story points, estimations, and so on and so on. Uh, what is transparency? Why is it important? Um, again, um, I'm sure that all of you practice a lot of different uh, um, transparency practices in, uh, in your organization and using information radiators and so on and so on and so on and so forth. But uh, um, what I heard a lot 
uh, when I was working with those team, it was uh, uh, actually with no plan. We just started delivering and so on and so on. Uh, this is what I've heard. Uh, actually, it's not uh, a methodology without a plan. It's uh, it's a methodology with with a plan, but being transparent with it. And this is what uh, um, this is what we've done in in our organization. We were transparent about the projects, the project bottlenecks, uh, the pro how the project is going. All kinds of reports were needed from different kinds of management. And even though it's not scrum by the book or agile methodology and everything else, we customized everything to allow our stakeholders and our sponsors to see if we're going to meet or if we're not going to meet uh, uh, our goals. And this is something that even now when I'm doing uh, a lot of trainings, this is what I'm explaining to, to, all, the, to all the participants. Agile is not forbidding everything. It's not forbidding having a plan. It's not forbidding jump shots or something like that. No, it's being transparent with it, which, which is the point that we need, to, we need to improve on. So we were brutally transparent on uh, the project uh, status reporting and everything else. Uh, the other thing that we were transparent about was the skill set that we were missing that skill set or we are having that skill set much more than we needed. So in this case, again, we were very transparent with all our stakeholders and they were aware that we have the skill set. Are we delivering enough? Are we meeting our goals? As a third step and my favorite one, it's about relationships because, you know, when you're working in a um, in specific team, you might not like everyone that you're working on, or you might like somebody a bit more than the other person. Uh, I was quite transparent with that as well, because those things, believe, me, believe it or not, it's impacting again the team, at least at the beginning of stage, when we are going through forming and storming, these relationships might affect the delivery. So we were quite transparent that, you know what, I need to work with that guy because this guy is getting my languages, understand me, blah, blah, all these kind of things. And it's helping me to be more productive. And the last thing that I that I uh, was transparent with, it was about maturity. How we are maturing as a team. Are we going Tuckman models quick enough or we are not quick enough? And if, you, if we're talking about maturity, there is uh, uh, what we aiming to do at the start was to get the early adopters on board as soon as possible because they were helping us to do that tran transformation. So when you're working with teams, it's very important to understand who are the people who, which are the early adopters and how you can, uh, uh, how they can help you with uh, uh, with that. Uh, the last thing about, uh, uh, I would say, it's uh, delivery um, and why it's important. Obviously, if we're delivered, we're more motivated and there is satisfaction, safe and experimental environment. It's very important measure and visibility and commitment and high scores. What I mean here is uh, when we started, and this was a very good practice that we used, when we were started and there was no boundaries of uh, we need to deliver by this date, that date, blah, blah, all these kind of things, and we need to follow every two week sprints, early delivery uh, brought much more happiness in the team because we deliver something, we code something, we send it to our customers, customers send back their feedback and we're happy. We see our, our work used and this delivered massive, massive improvement in the team, which as a next step allow us to be more experimental because when we, when we send our features to be tested by customers, they came up with feedback, which allow us to be a bit more experimental the next time, the next time, the next time. And it was like step by step getting more experimental and, and being in that safe environment because you know that you can propose improvements which are not entirely written in the product backlog, for example. Uh, after that, all the measurement that we were using, being higher velocity, a bit slower at the next sprint, then again higher velocity, allow us not only to measure what we can deliver by which date and have that uh, map to our release management, but more about when we can experiment, how we are experimenting, and what is the results in in uh, in those? So we we took the the velocity more as a learning point rather than just a point fingering uh, situation. And uh, the last thing which I wanted to mention is about the high scores. Uh, highest highest performers in the team were known, and and we already. Um, um, 
congratulate them on being the highest performance. This is something as a kudu card or something like uh, uh, appreciation cards. You can read a lot about it in Jurgen Apero book management 3.0 about kudu cards and, and everything else. This was something that we used, which brought amazing experience within the team uh, that I was working on. Because every week or every day we had some kudu cards for doing that, for helping me, for uh, achieving that complex uh, implementation, which was uh, actually great uh, initiative within a team, considering where we started. And uh, uh, I've got two more slides. Uh, and this is uh, actually the most important one. Um, what happened? Uh, <laughs> because uh, as of now, I'm just talking of, of the journey that we took, but what actually happened at the end? Uh, well, what happened? Some team members left. Um, starting with 40 people together, uh, we end up with uh, two teams by eight people. So we were 17, 16, 17 people at the end. Um, why? Because going back to the previous slides, those being transparent, those being uh, um, connected to delivery, those being connected to quality, uh, not being able to hide behind anybody else's back, it, it uh, came up with that uh, some people left because they were not high performance for that specific team. Maybe in another organization, they're going to be great, but in this one, they were not. Um, we, were, we showed brutal transparency about not meeting our goals and commitments as early as possible. It was something that we showed. Uh, and believe me, we stayed on meetings till 2 o'clock to find solution and how we can address that. Uh, we drastically improved our cross-functionality because we moved people from Mexico, from Miami, uh, from Bangalore. It was uh, all over the place with that, but we managed to, to get there. Uh, we had really, really clear visibility on our bottlenecks. Based on, on all the previous slides plus this one, we created that environment where bottlenecks were seen as an improvement point rather than something to be ashamed of or, or afraid of. Uh, there was a lot of work for me uh, for coaching and workshops uh, from C-level executives down to uh, support. Believe me, everyone needs to be aware why we're doing the things that uh, the way that we're doing them. And uh, what was important for us all the time, we measure efficiency. Uh, there is a lot of books about the efficiency. The most efficiency that we were uh, waiting was the queuing time that we that we have in our product backlog and our delivery not just lead time or cycle time, but the actual time when we were working. So uh, we were talking, uh, when we're talking about efficiency, we're talking about the work time versus the, the, the waiting time, the actual time when I'm writing code, which is helping a lot in, in those uh, transformation, I would say. And this is the last uh, slide. Uh, is it possible to have that in, in our company? Uh, short answer, yes, with, with a lot of buts. Uh, because you need to understand the company boundaries. We need to have supportive leaders. We need to have clear focus on what, how, and why we're doing things. We need to decide on the approaches, big bank approach versus pilot projects. And I'm not talking about only us as a change agents. I'm talking about the whole organization. Uh, and we need to consider what are the level of understanding about the approach. So when I go into clients, I always start with uh, inception and alignment which is helping me to find and understand which are our sponsors, which are the teams that we want to work on, what motivates them for the digital transformation, for that change that they're looking for. Is it uh, money? Is it they want to increase their quality? Is it competitive, pushing them, and so on and so on. So we need to understand this in a very uh, clear way. And uh, that's about it. Uh, for me, I, I'm leaving my LinkedIn account and my uh private email just uh, write to me so uh if you have any questions uh feel free to shoot them now thank you so much Luamir, uh for sharing insights You're about awesome. the success story you threw some light on the importance of sharing the success stories with teams you also covered team size and why it is important to keep it small. You yep. discussed about cross functionality, quality and building the right thing or building the right things. Okay, so it's up to the team. Yes. Think 
twice before getting started. You discussed about why transparency is important. You covered about the skills, maturity. You also covered delivery on time on quality and setting success, even having boundaries, if there are support yeah. leaders, by focusing on what, how, and why. So you have nicely explained. So I suggest if any of the participants has any questions, queries, we still have a uh, Three, four minutes with Lomir. He can answer those queries. Yeah, if there is any questions, uh, fine. I know it's, it's very short, unfortunately, and we can talk much more in detail about everything else. But... Yes, yeah, so we have one participant as Kamal Deep. Uh, uh, he just missed the last slide. Could you please reshare and throw some light? We still have two minutes, Lomir. Which one? This what what happened, or uh, how we can do that in our company? Yeah, yeah, success in our company. This uh, one well, is the last slide. To that, yeah, uh, to make that uh, success in our company, it's it's uh, really really important first to understand what is our company boundaries because some company have uh, technical boundaries, some company have personal boundaries, some are on different location. And we need to understand when we're doing that digital transformation, what are the boundaries? The second one is we need to have supportive leaders, people that are going to drive that change because you as a Scrum Master or Agile Coach or Change Agent or Safe Coach, you cannot drive that by yourself. Third thing, clear focus on what, how and why we be, why we starting this uh, whole transformation. Then the fourth one, decide on the approach. Some companies, smaller companies, can start with big bang approach. They said, you know what, from Monday we're starting with something else. But big companies, Spotify, Google, Facebook, Netflix, and so on and so on, they cannot start with big bang approach. They're starting with pilot projects. They deliver further. And the last one is level understanding of the approach. Doesn't matter which approach we're using. Is it Agile methodology? Is it a Scrum framework, Kanban, Lean, Design Sprint, whatever it is. Okay, thank you. Uh, there are uh, sure. questions and we have a couple of minutes. Uh, let's uh, try to cover as many as we can. Okay. How, how what? Sorry, I didn't hear you. There are a couple of questions. So, sorry to interrupt. Uh, there is yeah. another question from Kesab. Can you please give an example of how you manage dependencies? by defining and delaying delivery or consume and digest was the room to uh, negotiate the scope there was no room to negotiate the scope and how we manage that is we just showed that being in the current situation we're not going to meet it it was just honest I, I i don't want to say honest but it was a brutal uh, transparency that by going in that direction that we are going we're not going to meet our goals and we need support from technical perspective, from architectural perspective, from uh, domain knowledge perspective to meet that goal. Hope, Kesab, uh, you got the answer from Lubomir. So we have another question from Mansi. Yeah. She's asking, please share some pointers on how to resolve conflict when cross-functional teams have to work together. Yes, uh, sorting conflicts. Uh, there is multiple techniques to sort conflicts, but uh, what I'm using is uh, uh, separate the people from the conflict and understand is it personal or is it technical? Because some sometimes it's just, you know what, my solution is much better than your solution because I'm senior, because I'm much better than you. Uh, separate them from that, uh, from that perspective and and put the problem into, into the middle of, uh, of the conversation and how we as a team, we can approach that situation because most of the time what I've seen, and this is really from practice, it's uh, most of the time it's just the senior people uh, screaming at each other about that problem. And maybe what we can do is to involve all the other team members, even though they're going to be quiet, they're not going to participate and so on, but it will be like a shield to the senior people not to fight with each other. And uh, also another thing is, is try to illustrate the problem. Don't just wait for the wording and say, my solution is better. Try to illustrate it, uh, paint it on the wall so people can see and, and people can uh, act on it. Okay. 
Hope you get the answer, Mansi. If there is any other <laughs> question, anybody has, we still have few minutes. Uh, rather than we can you get into the networking zone, we can answer any questions, queries if you have. Sure. Or feel free to contact me in any other uh, way. I'll try to answer everyone because uh, I think it's it's really important having those uh, scrum gatherings all over the world to to share experiences. Absolutely, totally agree with you, Lou Mead. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yep. So if you don't have any question, I request, I suggest participate to share your feedback with us, uh, so that we can understand how it went well. Lou Mead, I will also suggest you also please share your experience uh, with us. How did you feel? Did you uh, face any issues or something? So that uh, next time we'll improve on all the, those stuffs. Definitely. Uh, hopefully, we could. We're going to see each other next year uh, live. Sure, sure. Ansuman, is there anything else that we need to have now, or uh, all I done? I think we should be good, and we are on time. So yes. thank you so much for your insightful talk, and uh, wish you all the best for uh, other sessions as well. And thank you. You'll be enjoying our other sessions. Which yeah, is, yeah, I'm just going to jump on, on another one. Yeah, yeah, which will be driven by some other participants. Thank you. Thanks, so much. everyone, for the opportunity and uh, hope to see you again soon. Sure. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you, Lubomir. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye bye.